you have this idea of hell being horrible, torturous. Satan's there with his whips and whatever else, and you know you're going to be punished for eternity. Whereas, how accurate is that to kind of like Gnosticology version of hell in the face? In that, it seems a little bit harsh in the fact that most people, who, you know, if you don't die in battle, the idea is that you go to hell. And it seems pretty harsh if you're going to suffer forever just mm. for not dying in battle. Like, obviously, I understand the I the ideal situation is to go out in the warriors, you know, go out swinging and and go to. Uh, to Valhalla, but if that doesn't happen, you were taken by sickness. It seems a little mean to uh, be sent to to like the Christian version of hell. Yeah, so so there's a couple of things to say, and let's uh, just to like dial back to what you, you were pointing out, Stina, with the, uh, uh, the, the 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 disconnect between Balder being like the the best of all the gods, and then you know going to hell and you know all of that stuff. Um, that that is uh, Snorri Sturluson's uh, opinion about him. Um, so yeah, yeah, Snurri, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the interesting thing is that Snorri, he, uh, he's very clever in his representation of all of this. Yeah. He basically, he tells us, this is a place called hell. Yeah, I was just other. saying, yeah, I mean, like, he didn't make any sense with, like, yeah. 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 And, it, and, it's, and it's, uh, that's because he wants to sneak uh, a Christian punishment of sinners into the story. Um, that's what he's doing here. He's, uh, he, he's, so, so in his Christian mind, uh, I think it's the fifth level of hell. Um, that's for heathens. <laughs> and that's how he perceives the, the Nordic gods. Snorri Sturluson thought of the Nordic gods as humans. He thought that they were sorcerers who, who were basically capable of, uh, of tricking people to, to believe that they were gods. That, that he explains all of this in the, the prologue to the Edda. So, so this you, you have to see the death of Balder in Snorri Sturluson's description in relation to that. Yeah, and so yeah. that that tells that us they come little, from Asia, and <laughs> that they came from Asia, that they came from <laughs> Troy even. Um, and so, so, so that's that's part of his representation. But if we try to like take the story of Balder's death out of uh, uh, that Christian context and say, like, well, what would this have looked like if, for people who had never heard about the, those, the Christian ideas of, of, of the underworld? Um, and, and that brings us to your question, Daniel, about like, this weird uh, uh, disconnect between like, a warrior paradise and, and shitty afterlife for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, again, I think, very snurry. Um, who is like inflating ideas about uh, Valhut that you know obviously are from the Viking Age? They're they, the earliest ideas of Valhut um, and the idea of like quote unquote warrior paradise are definitely from the Viking Age. But um, I don't think, first of all, that it was particularly a paradise uh, in in their minds. Um, mm-hmm. This is very snurry. Uh, he is the one who takes certain stances out of uh, uh, the poem Grimismal. And then he says, oh, look at this. They eat bacon and they get drunk and they're having a party. That sounds like fucking really, paradise to me. It does sound like paradise, but that's not really what those stances actually say. So okay. <laughs> they are much more cryptic Like when it comes down to it. Um, it one, the, the one that he uses, I think it's 18, number 18 from Grimismal. I can't remember exactly. But but that one says actually, but few know what the ain hair you actually eat. So it's, it's like they don't eat that bacon that you talked about. It like it literally says in the stanza that we don't know what they live off. Mm-hmm. Um, so like there's there's a lot of uh, ambiguity and a lot of uh, messing around with the source material from Snorri's side. So that's one thing. And then then the question is like, is hell that dreary? Is does it suck that much? Um, and and Snurri gives us this long description of like how the the dish is called hunger and the knife is called famine, so that indicates that there's nothing to eat there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know the the curtains are called gleaming bale or sickness or whatever, something like that. So 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 it's like, it sucks. 
And that's again, because he wants to contrast with that warrior paradise that he is like, you know, creating for us um, because his idea of, of like the Vikings, these pre-Christian ancestors of his was that they were all about war and, and, and being jerk offs. Like, we have to actually mm-hmm. consider that he he thought they were kind of jerk offs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's also part of it. Um, and so, the, of course, naturally, they would have like sort of like same kind of like Christian ideas about heaven and hell. Um, but it would just be, you know, different in the sense that they were all about war. So 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 paradise must be all about war. That's really what he's doing. If we go to um, Saxo, again, who is such a treasure trove when it comes to Nordic mythology, actually, uh, we have an, uh, another idea where you find Valhurt. Saxo has placed Valhurt in hell. Like you go to the underworld to find uh, that, uh, that, part, uh, that place where warriors go to. And he doesn't have any descriptions of... Um, you know, the, the, a feast or uh, awesome party, partying in, in Odin's Hall and all that stuff. All he has is eternal war in the underworld. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, he, he is like almost verbatim quoting parts of the poem Vertuspal, for instance, talking about the rivers of, uh, of axes and swords and all that stuff. So these are two different Christian authors in medieval times trying to tell us a couple of things about their ancestors who weren't Christians, right? Um, if we Sounds go back, so complicated. It is always complicated. <laughs> but if we go to, like, what did these people probably think? Like, did, did those people who lived before Christianity in Scandinavia, they probably had more of an idea that, that the, the afterlife kind of mirrored the life that you had lived that you for instance had the same status if you were a king you would also be a king in the afterlife Mm -hmm. if you were a peasant you would be a peasant in the afterlife and so on and um i mean if you think about it they they loaded up people's graves with all kinds of items grave goods things that they obviously thought these people would need in death so, so that means then that they also thought that you needed you know, a nice little package of, of goodies to bring with you to the underworld mm-hmm. so you can be set up, right? Um, so in a sense, basically, when you didn't talk about hell as this covered place, this, this place that we can't see, it's probably like they're probably just thinking that, you know, you, you, you pass beyond that veil that, that shrouds that person from us and to live you know, a similar type of life over there it, in the other it seems, world. It seems more Egyptian in its idea than do you go to another place and carry on living a life and you have to take things with you into this world rather than a Christian version of the afterlife. Because I guess, I mean, I'm not Christian. I don't profess to have ever know much about it. But I guess my idea of heaven is that you kind of go there. You don't really need anything because everything's there laid out waiting for you whatever you need you get you get a little halo above your head and and that's and that's that you know that you don't have to take anything with you because you're looked after with whatever your heart desires so it's as far as i understand the original christian theology was actually that all that stuff was going to happen here on earth not go to heaven that we that you know if we were christian then then we would basically rise from the dead when Christ comes back and those who weren't Christian, they would uh, perish and then you would have eternal life on earth. Okay. And um, then people started dying <laughs> because the, the original uh, congregation, <laughs> they, they thought that they were going to live forever. And then they like, started dying and then they freaked out. And then they, the, 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 the ball of theology, so to speak, started rolling and so that's when Christianity yeah. adapted to suit so like scientific scientific finds and the changing of ideology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, thought, who thought they'd do that? <laughs> <laughs> and and by the way, uh, to be fair, those descriptions of of hell and the underworld in 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 Mediterranean Europe. That's actually very close to a lot of um, uh, pre-Christian Roman and Greek mythology. 
So I think a lot of, I mean, pre-Christian religions have so much in common. You can even go to, I mean, Yoruba religion uh, in Nigeria and I, you see like a pantheon of gods, even in West Africa was very similar to a uh, pantheon of gods in uh, Greece or uh, Nordic mythology. So I, uh, it's, yeah, or in Hinduism as well. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just, uh, I think it's so refreshing to read about because it kind of, even though you're not a Christian, how we are uh, socialized into seeing the world is so influenced by it. So it's mm. so refreshing to read about uh, other types of uh, worldviews.